I'll just start with the ocean is way deeper than you think. The ocean is really, really deep. Deeper, in fact, than most of us realize. If you were to shave off all of the land from the tops of every continent and island in the world and fill up the ocean's deepest points with that land, then the entire Earth would be covered in an ocean two miles deep. Three-fourths of our planet is already covered in water, deeper. though, and it goes a lot deeper than just two miles. Let's okay. start with a sense of scale. This dot right here is the size of an average human. This slightly larger dot is the size of an elephant, and this is the size of the largest ship ever built, the Nock Nevis. With that in mind... I don't know much about the average lifespan of a large vessel, such as Nock Nevis, so ship enthusiasts, let me know. But... I remember learning that this ship, well, they finished building it in, I think, 79, or at least the late 70s in Japan, and then it wasn't beached until 2009. And then, of course, during that time, it was sold, renamed a few times, and then I think they finally scrapped it in 2010. And I have no clue what it was called when it was scrapped. I don't think it was Nock Nevis anymore. But that seems like a long lifespan to me. So you guys will have to let me know. Also, in the background, I heard the Mr. Ballin theme music. If you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious in story format, you already know. Fine, <laughs> let's start going Love underwater that and see what we find out. The first milestone is at 40 meters below the surface, which is the maximum depth allowed for recreational scuba diving. A little further down at 93 meters is where the wreck of the Never Lusitania been scuba was diving. discovered, which is interesting because the Lusitania itself is 240 meters long, which means that it sank in water shallower huh. than it is long, so if the ship was standing on its stern or bow, it would be sticking out of the water. Just slightly deeper than that at 100 meters is where diving can become seriously fatal if you're not careful because of decompression sickness. But that didn't stop a man named Herbert Nitsch to accomplish the free diving world record at a diver. depth of 214 yeah. meters. This guy swam down to this level with just one single breath. But a little further down at 332 Whoa. meters, we have the scuba diving world record, which was accomplished by another man named Ahmed Gaber. If he had swam down another 111 meters, then he would have reached the height of the Empire State Building if it was submerged underwater. And a little further than that, at 500 meters below the surface, we arrive at the maximum dive depth of blue whales, the largest creatures on the planet and also the limit of the U.S. Seawolf class nuclear submarine. At 535 meters, we can witness the maximum dive depth of Emperor Penguins, and this is when we must bring up the intensity of water pressure. At this level below the surface... Penguins can dive deeper than a U.S.-grade submarine. Huh. The water pressure exerted on a person, or the penguins, would be roughly equivalent to a polar bear standing on a quarter. So further down the depths, at 830 meters, would be the height of the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, the tallest building in the world. Once we hit 1,000 meters below the surface, we begin to enter the scary zone. Light from the surface can no longer reach oh, beyond that's this the scary point, zone. so the rest of the ocean below is shrouded in permanent darkness. On top of that, the water pressure... That's interesting because I think the deepest we've gone as humans, or the deepest depth that we know of, if I'm not mistaken, is 11,000 meters, something around there. So if 1,000 meters is already very dark, that space is crazy. Who knows what exists down there? Sure, you would experience at this point would be about the same as if you were standing on the surface of the planet Venus, meaning that you would die very quickly. You would also meet the giant squid at this sea level if the water pressure didn't already kill you. At 1,280 meters, we reach the maximum depth dived to by the leatherback sea turtle, and further down at 1,828 meters, we would reach the deepest part of the Grand Canyon were it to be underwater with us. Down at 2,000 meters, we start to encounter some of the more terrifying sea creatures, like the ominously named Black Dragonfish, a carnivorous beast with a stomach that doesn't allow light to be emitted through it. I love thinking of all the animals that we don't know about down there. And back to that 11,000 meters in the North Pacific, I think that there are way deeper spots that we just haven't gotten to. But what do I know? 
light, meaning that since we're in total darkness underwater at this point, the only way you would ever see this thing is with a flashlight. That's ugly. A little further down at 2,250 meters, we would reach the maximum depth dived to by both sperm whales and the very frightening colossal squid. Sperm whales often have sucker marks and scars left on their bodies from battles with a colossal squid that likely take place at these incredible depths. The squids themselves That's can grow crazy. to be 14 meters long and weigh up to 750 kilograms with eyes the size of a dinner plate and razor sharp sickles in the middle of their tentacles. Non-metric system people, 750 kilograms is somewhere around 1,650 pounds. So the weight of a big horse. So yeah, good luck with that down there. Way further down at 3,800 meters, we can find the wreck of the RMS Titanic. And a bit past that at 4,000 meters, we start to enter the abyssal zone of the ocean. Water pressure is at an astonishing 11,000 pounds per square well, that's inch the down abyss. here. And there are numerous strange, almost alien-like creatures that inhabit these depths, such as the fangtooth, anglerfish, and viperfish. Down at 4,267 no, <laughs> meters is the average depth of the ocean where you would normally expect to hit the floor, but there are parts of the ocean that go significantly deeper than even this. At 4,791 meters rests the wreckage of the battleship Bismarck sunk during World War II, and way down at 6,000 meters is the beginning of the Hadal Zone, named after the underworld Hades itself. The water pressure Sounds down hellish. at these depths can become 1,100 <laughs> times what you would experience mm. way back on top at the surface, which is roughly equal to an elephant balancing on a postage stamp or a single person carrying the weight of 50 Boeing 747 jumbo jets. The perspective. Jets. Down at these depths, you would be crushed immediately without any outside protection, but life still exists yeah. down here in various strange forms. At 6,500 meters, we reach the maximum depth that the DSV Alvin can dive to, a popular research What's submarine that helped to discover the Titanic. Way further down at 8,848 meters below the surface and we have arrived at the height of Mount Everest were it to be upside down and placed underwater. And then way further past even that at 10,898 meters we arrive at the depth reached by James Cameron in 2012 during the Deep Sea Challenger mission. The deepest point in the ocean yet reached by humans was back in 1960 though, when two men named Don Walsh and Jacques Picard reached a depth of 10,916 meters using their Trieste submarine. It took them five hours to descend so through the ocean off. to this depth and they only stayed for 20 minutes before a window cracked and they began to resurface. Just a I bit further panic. down from there at 10,972 <laughs> meters and we reach the average flight altitude of a commercial airliner. So if you've ever looked out of a window while on a flight and looked down to the ground, that's a very good sense of how incredibly deep down into the abyss that we are currently at. Finally, when we hit 10,994 meters, we have hit the bottom of the known ocean called the Challenger Deep, right here on this map just about 300 kilometers southwest of Guam Island. However, it is believed that there are almost certainly even deeper parts of the ocean than this that just haven't been discovered yet. It wasn't until 1997, after all, that the Serena Deep was discovered with a depth of 10,732 meters, making it the second deepest known point in the ocean. It is estimated that only about 5% of the ocean's floor has been accurately mapped, leaving the other 95% to be currently a mystery. It may be only a matter of time before an even deeper part of our ocean is found, and who knows what we may discover there. Wow. I don't want to tinfoil hat this one, but I'm going to. I think there could be intelligent life forms in deeper parts of the ocean. I'll explain. But I've read varying accounts for how much of the ocean is unexplored. Anywhere from 80 to 95%. It's hard to find... A myriad of sources that agree, but I think it's closer to the higher number. On this video, he said that 95% of the ocean floor is unmapped. So to me, intelligent life just seems possible considering all that we have on land with less space. But I doubt there's any half humanoid, half fish. I'm not picturing a mermaid. Dolphins are also intelligent. I'm just thinking of an animal that can communicate efficiently, perhaps live in packs, and can of course handle that water pressure. And maybe we haven't seen them because we can't go down just as they might not be able to come up due to pressure. It's a working hypothesis. I have absolutely no evidence to back that up whatsoever. Our understanding of what's possible so deep down is just very limited. So I don't think it's impossible, but feel free to weigh in on that. 
This video didn't get into that, but if a penguin can dive deeper than a submarine and they say we know more about Mars than we do about the ocean, is it really that crazy? I don't know. You'll let me know. Anyway, a literary recommendation. My first thought were these books, the classics, right? Like a Old Man in the Sea, which I really like Hemingway, but I would say that Old Man in the Sea is probably my least favorite novel of his. Or Moby Dick, which isn't Hemingway. But I'll go the other way. There is a book called Brilliant Abyss by an author. Her name is Helen Scales. Scales is for sure the last name. I'm not sure if the first name was Helen. I'll have to check and get back to you. But she does a really good job of giving some background on the ecosystem in the deep ocean. And she references quite a few studies. That's actually why I know anything about the ocean was reading that book. It was written somewhat recently, so I'm pretty sure it's not in the public domain and I won't find a free audiobook, but I'll still try. If I find it, I'll link it. If not, you'll just find the title linked. Other than that, let me know what you thought about any of this. And as always, thanks for watching with me.